Hello, welcome to Couples Create Cashflow for our final video on personal finance, how to win with money. Today is stage five, which is where you reach financial independence. Uh, my name is Jordan. I am a certified financial coach. I'm here to help you figure out which stage of personal finance, um, your personal finance journey that you're on and help you get where you want to go. Today, we're going to recap our first four stages that you can look at in our other videos. Um, the first stage was to recognize that sometimes we have to just start by creating positive cash flow by cutting some expenses. Um, that's when your income does not match up with your expenses, that you need to have more income than you spend. And so the very first step is to make sure that you can balance your budget. And usually the fastest way to do that is by cutting some expenses. Stage two is to increase your income and try to save $1,000 for an emergency fund. And so to do that, you usually have to find some creative ways to work more hours, sell some things, or even start a side hustle. Stage three is once you've gotten that emergency fund set up, you've got to be able to continue to increase your monthly cash flow. And so we're looking at how do you find ways to pay off debts that have a monthly interest payment so that you um, not only can reduce how much interest you pay out to other people, but also eliminate completely the monthly payments that go with those debt um, services. So that's stage three. Once you get past stage three, you've, got to, you've gotten to a point where you have paid off all your debts, except for perhaps your house. A lot of people are sitting with um, mortgage rates that are fairly low. And so getting to a point where you've paid off your consumer debt, um, things like credit cards, student loans, car payments, and now you're kind of looking at, well, do I want to pay off a loan that's sitting at 4% or 3% or would I rather start investing some money and make 5, 10, 15% of my investments? So um, stage four is about learning how to use your cash flow each month to buy assets. Um, so there's kind of a, a fork in the road there for some people. Most people will either uh, choose to start investing and continue to make their mortgage payments. And the other path is to double down on paying off all your debt by sending all your money towards your home payment, uh, eliminating your mortgage altogether. And so in that stage, a lot of people will choose um, to pick the, the investing side and buy some assets. But there are still some people that would much rather just not have a, a house payment. Today, we're talking about financial independence. And so we have two different um, paths that we're gonna highlight. Uh, but first, I just wanna let you know, as a financial coach, I really do want to help you out with whatever uh, stage you're at in this journey. Um, if you identified a stage in that list that matches up with you, um, I'd, I'd love to help you get to the next stage. So I am offering a free 60 minute consultation call. Um, my link here to my Calendly, uh, calendar uh, will get you started. And I would love to just sit down and talk with you over Zoom and get to know where you're at. And then that way uh, you can tell whether or not um, an ongoing financial coaching relationship with me would be helpful. But if you enjoy the videos, I mean, watch all the videos that you possibly can that I offer, get a lot of good information. And then, you know, if you want some specific information about your situation, be happy to help you out with that. Um, so, yeah, let's jump to the next slide. Um, so the basic definition of financial independence is that your passive income, the money that you are not working hourly for, um, or your cash flow from your assets is covering your basic expenses. And so your working at a job is no longer required, it's optional. And so there are two different main paths um, and you need to figure out which path you're on, um, which path do you feel more comfortable with? Um, so that there's two rules. One rule would be the 4% rule. Uh, this is a way, uh, we'll, we'll get into this more, but this is a way of basically accumulating stocks and other sorts of assets that you can sell off and um, cover your expenses that way. And then there's the cash flow method of financial independence, which is the way of purchasing um, cash flowing assets such as businesses or real estate and allowing those things to operate um, with very minimal input from yourself and allowing you to reap some benefits from that. Um, we are not going to try to win the lottery. That is not going to be the plan for financial independence. All right, so the 4% rule is about regular saving each month with the goal of accumulating enough money that you can withdraw that money from your growth in your stocks and bonds or cash 
in each year to cover your expenses without root taking from your principal. So the concept would be if you have a nest egg, you don't want to deplete it like every single year to the point where you will run out of money um, before you die. Um, really what we want is a pool of money that is consistently growing at a rate that is faster than what we're taking out of it. And that we would like to have at the end of it, we would like to have the ability to um, maintain that pool of money so that we don't have to worry about how long we live or other expenses that come up. So this requires that we have some way of guessing or knowing where that dollar amount would be. And so the 4% rule is the way to get there. Um, so you get to this number by taking your annual personal expenses. So monthly expenses times 12, take that full year expenses and you multiply that by 25. So that would give you a large number. And for a lot of people, that number is in the millions, right? It's usually something like two to $3 million. Uh, could be less, could be more. Um, and this is the ratio of growth that you're able to pull, 4%. So they're saying usually the stock market averages about 7% growth. And then 3% usually goes to inflation, which leaves you about 4% that you can take out each year without actually taking from the principal. Um, now, thinking about this properly, you're selling stock shares in order to pay your bills, correct? And when you have accumulated these stock shares, uh, you're most likely reinvesting dividends so that you, you purchase small portions of shares, which is what gives your portfolio the ability to grow exponentially. Um, when we have this ability to grow exponentially, um, selling shares is not the same as using our um, our principal or our, our base. It's actually, we're, we're pulling from shares that are part of the compounding process. And so... Um, the idea would be if you've paid off all your debt, you've reduced how much your expenses are each month to kind of the bare minimum, um, you can withdraw just what you need or you can sell just what you need in order to live your lifestyle the way you want to. Um, it also gives you the flexibility if you want in order to go back to work um, and just you know work a part-time job and have some kind of um, supplemental income from your um, stock selling. Now, to be aware of, this real quick. Um, when you're selling stocks, there is a capital gains tax that is applicable. And so you always have to factor in the tax impacts that you have um, for selling your shares. And then the other piece about this would be the market goes up and down. And so if you need to sell shares in order to pay your bills and you decide to sell a bunch of shares just to get your money for the year, and then the stock market goes up before you use the money, the timing of that may feel really strange and you might be upset about the fact that you sold lower than you wanted to. So there is always going to be that game of, you know, when do I sell to pay my bills? Um, the other piece is if you're holding these financial stocks inside of a 401k or a Roth IRA, you do have to wait till retirement age to pull that money out. And you'd have to think about if you have the 401k, then you're going to get taxed on the, the withdrawal. If you have the Roth IRA, you've already been taxed on that money. You got taxed on it on the front end, so you don't have to pay taxes when you pull it out. So I guess taxation is, is not always going to happen. But if you're holding stocks in a regular brokerage account, um, like a Robinhood or um, Charles Schwab, those kind of things, um, you will have a tax um, consideration when you sell. Um, and if you're going for early retirement and you have money in a, in a 401k, it's not very easy to get that money out. That money has to kind of stay put until you're 59 and a half. So you do have to think about the timing of when you can pull it out as well. Um, there are ways around that. Um, this, this channel is not really devoted to things like that. However, we are looking at the other model of financial independence, which is more of the Robert Kiyosaki, rich dad, poor dad model, which is the cash flow model. Um, when your cash flow from your assets gets to be higher than your personal expenses. Um, this doesn't mean that you're debt free. I mean, it, it, it could mean that you're using leverage in order to purchase assets. And as long as those assets pay the monthly cost of the leverage, uh, the loan, you can end up doing just fine. It still produces a cash flow, right? So um, a lot of times this is a real estate investment type of situation where 
Maybe you have a multiplex or even just a duplex, single family, bunch of single family homes, and each one's cash flowing at like $300 a month or something like that. And you just stack all those on top of each other and that pays your bills. Um, sometimes what people will do is they'll plan out their mortgages that they have on their rental properties so that they, uh, the, the mortgage gets paid off right when they want to go into passive income time. And so that gives them the ability to, to stop working and enjoy higher cash flow from the same properties that they've been holding, uh, which is another kind of a cool way that you can manage your properties. Um, so if you are not able to get into the real estate world, or if you're not willing to run a business or create business systems, um, truly it might be better to go with that 4% plan because anybody can buy stocks, right? You can, you can throw your money into the stock market. You can buy index funds. You can put money into your 401k. That's kind of the basic level. You still need to know what you're doing, but it's, it's very accessible to people. Purchasing real estate and getting into business can sometimes be a pretty um, learning intensive process. You need to really kind of be ready before you go into it. All right. So the ultimate goal of stage five is to see either your nest egg get really large or to increase your passive income from your um, cash flow from your assets to get to those minimum requirements to make your traditional employment optional. Now, some people love their job. They have no reason to leave. And so you can kind of hit this number uh, with the help of your, your income pretty easily and early, you know, like it, if you were to decide, well, I do want to work, but I don't don't want to work all the time. I just want to work my same job part time, and I want to cut my hours in half. Well, then you can create an opportunity for yourself to do that by supplementing the other half of your income through passive income. Uh, Robert Kiyosaki has a quote talks about um, wealth as if you want to know how long will your money work for you, uh, or how long will you survive if you stopped working today. And he said. His definition of wealth is that if you answer indefinitely, then you're financially independent. Um, so that the idea would be if you have passive income that is being uh, producing everything you need in order to survive, you could stop working and everything would still get paid. All right, action steps. So when we're at this stage, um, things are good, right? We've gotten to that point. But in order to get to this stage, we need to pick a strategy. We got to really focus in our extra cash flow on buying assets that put us towards this goal. I, I see a lot of people and myself included kind of looking at different strategies and trying to like figure out how they all work together. And in my opinion, it's really important to hone in on a single strategy and not try to be going across the buffet of strategies and choosing little bits and pieces. What ends up happening is you may not realize it, but you may be focusing some of your energy towards things that are not compatible or don't synergize with each other. And it can create a distance between you and financial independence instead of getting you there faster. Um, and then what I would say is as you pick that strategy, think about your investor profile, like what it is that you um, feel okay with, what you know already, what you're willing to learn. Um, I wouldn't throw tons of money at something that's totally new to you. I would really do a lot of research and a lot of education. YouTube is a great place for that. Um, people are you know, doing a lot of free information about how to be wise with your money. Um, but I do think it's important to not make huge moves without having some kind of education to back it and then make adjustments sparingly. Like it, it will take some time for something new that you put into practice to um, turn into something that is producing uh, the kind of income that you want. Um, it's a big deal to buy a rental property that needs some work and go through the whole renovation process and get a tenant in there and then have them start to pay that money to you each month. Uh, it takes a lot of money up front to be able to do that. And I think sometimes being uh, unready for that can be very stressful. All right, I do have a free gift for you if you uh, made it all the way to the end of the video. Um, I really love Velocity Banking, and I really, truly try to help people get started with that if they can. And so I do have a free download for you today. It's called The Three Steps to Start Velocity Banking, and that's a quick checklist. Uh, it also comes with a, uh, or it's a cheat sheet that comes with a checklist of what to look for in a good HELOC, um, especially if you're just adding a HELOC to your current mortgage as a second position. Uh, it gives you that opportunity to uh, really do the right digging. Um, I also offer you a um, chance to purchase my mini course, which is uh, how to get the right HELOC for Velocity Banking. And I'll put the link for that in the description below as well. But the free guide 
gets you started with what it looks like to do velocity banking. And truly velocity banking is a great way to get into assets. We talk about that in our asset video uh, for stage four, but um, I do believe access to capital is a huge part of getting to financial independence. Uh, it just really depends on which strategy you're using. Uh, the strategy where you're going for more cash flow, you really do want uh, to have access to a HELOC at some level, I feel like, because that gives you the ability to make purchases, do renovations, things like that, that normally you would have to uh, tap into private lenders for and at a higher interest rate with different kinds of terms. So that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. Check out the other videos in the series if you want to learn more about how to win with money. And until next time, thanks for watching.